Welcome to Ada Box 007. With previous Ada Boxes, you've built robots and radios, learned Circuit Python, and played retro games. Now, you're ready to learn about the dark arts of electronics. This Ada Box is super sneaky, with a secret, spy, and security theme. Everything in this box will teach you stuff they don't want you to know. We wanted to bring you the full experience of being a super hacker spy, but without having to hang upside down from a helicopter or break into Megacore's skyscraper headquarters at 2 a.m. You'll use your brains and hands to solve puzzles, send secret messages, bypass locks, and listen in on the radio waves around you. Then, you'll build some electronic projects that will teach you about security while having fun. You'll learn how real hackers and security experts work, and at the same time, how to protect yourself from spying eyes. Ada Box 007. Hey, this is John Park for Adafruit, and welcome to the unboxing of Ada Box 007. Hopefully you've gotten your box in the mail at this point and you can play along as we check out the contents of this brand new Ada box. We're really excited about this Ada box because it is the spy and security themed 007. Let's take a look at the contents. Ooh, our beautiful Ada box itself. I'm going to take the Ada box out and we can take a look at some of the goodies that come in the box for subscribers. This one is packed, as you can tell. So we had to put some inside of this larger box. First of all, we have the EFF Electronic Frontier Foundation supplied sticker set. And we have an issue of Hackspace magazine. Hackspace is an excellent, fairly new magazine that serves the maker and hacker community. It's beautiful, has all kinds of articles in it about making. So check that out. Setting our outer packaging aside, we get to the main event, Adabox 007 itself. So first of all, I'm going to slide the die cut outer packaging off, revealing the beautiful Adafruit logo. And if we pull out the insert, we can take a look at the table of contents of the box. All right, now, Instead of reading through the table of contents on this, let's go through them ourselves. I'm going to open this up and be careful because it is packed. First thing we'll notice is we have a pack in, which is a webcam cover sponsored by DigiKey. So this is pretty cool. You can take this out of its little bag and this will stick in front of your webcam in order to prevent anyone from watching you without your knowledge. Next, let's take a look inside the tissue paper of our Adabox 007. Like I said, it's packed. Be careful. Who knows what things might come out as you lift out the inner packaging. So I'm going to take out this enormous bag, but we also have some things that may be off to the side, so double check when you remove the contents of yours. Nothing in there. I'll set that tissue paper aside. But look, inside the box underneath, we have an issue of 2600 Magazine. This is the hacker and phone freaker standby for decades. And you might learn a lot of interesting things about hacking the system inside of 2600. All right, looks like nothing else in this box, so I'm going to close that up and set it off to the side. A 
And now, let's take a look, first of all, right on top in this case, I have the Gemma M0. Now, the Gemma M0 is an M0-based microcontroller that is tiny yet powerful. We have a lot of interesting projects that you'll be making with your Gemma M0. And there it is. This has six connections that you can use wire, screws, and nuts, as we're going to show you in some of these projects, or alligator clips, which you may have from previous Ada boxes, to connect up to outside sensors, to power things, to use capacitive touch. It's got a lot packed onto this board. And some of the more exciting projects we have involve the fact that this can emulate a USB device. So it can look like a keyboard or a mouse on any computer into which it is plugged. So very interesting implications for security from our little Gemma M0. Now let's dig into the bag some more. I'm going to shake this out and see what comes out. Nothing hiding in there. Set this aside. Uh, now, one thing I want to point out, right at the bottom here, we have a puzzle. This is the DigiKey-sponsored DigiKeyer puzzle. This actually has the circuit board of the original DigiKeyer, which was a kit that was used to send Morse code. So this is kind of a step back into history, and you might enjoy putting together that puzzle. Thanks, DigiKey. We also have a tattoo of our good friend Blinka. We've got a padlock. Let's open this package up. We've got a couple of keys. We're not going to need those. And we have this clear padlock. Now, I'm not going to bother with the keys, but later we'll take a look at using these lock picks to open it up. This is a really nice pick set that has a couple of tension wrenches, some hook picks, some diamond picks, and even a ripple side wafer pick. What else have we got? Ooh, we have the Boldport Club stickers. Now, this is a really neat sticker set that you can use to decorate things, and it's got a breadboard and a few different components and wires for you to simulate your favorite small circuit. We have batteries, three triple A's, as well as a battery pack that has an on-off switch and a JST connector to power our Gemma M0. We've also got a little screw that came with that battery pack that can be used to screw the door in place securely. We have some enamel-coated magnet wire. This is a very, very thin wire that you can use to create an antenna for one of our projects that involves an AM radio and a Morse code keyer using our Gemma M0. We also have a piezo buzzer. Now, this buzzer is going to come in handy on a lot of projects where we want to make sounds from our Gemma M0. The Gemma M0 doesn't have a speaker built on, but we can use the piezo buzzer instead. Now, there are different ways to connect things to the Gemma M0. We've used in the past wires, alligator clips. In this case, we're going to use nuts and screws. So we have these nice little M3 nuts and screws, which are eight millimeters long, just perfect to thread through the Gemma M0's holes and they're electrically conductive. So we can then use the nuts to screw on the leads of things like LEDs or other sensors. Now, we've got a couple things here that go together. This is a UV marking invisible ink pen, and we have an ultraviolet LED. When the LED is powered by the Gemma M0, we will be able to see secret messages that are written with the ultraviolet ink, which is not visible under normal light. That's pretty cool, and we have a nice little project that'll show you how to build that. We also, speaking of light outside of the visual spectrum, have an infrared LED and an infrared receiver. There it is. 
So we have some projects that show you how to decode infrared signals that are sent by things like remote controls for your TV, as well as a TV Be Gone project with the Gemma that allows you to turn off any television on the planet at the press of a button. The Gemma will run through every known off code for every TV set. Very cool project, kind of sneaky and disruptive. Okay, what else have we got? Ah, there is a potentiometer. This is a 10K potentiometer, which is essentially a resistor that you can change the value of by turning the knob. And we have this nice knob that can go on it and make it a little easier to turn. It just press fits onto here like this. So we have some cool projects that use the potentiometer and knob on the Gemma M0. And again, we have this very cool technique of joining the potentiometer to the board using the screws and nuts. So you'll check that out in the learning guide later. We also have a fast vibration switch. This thing is really cool. It's a tiny little cylinder that has a spring with one lead running out the bottom that we can connect it to. And then a central shaft, which is a stiffer piece of metal, also has a lead that we can connect to. And when this thing moves, the spring ever so slightly shakes and makes contact with that center post, which we can detect on the Gemma M0. So we have a project that shows you how to build a motion sensor, which you'll be able to use to detect when someone picks up your stuff and will sound the alarm on the piezo buzzer. A very cool little gizmo that is. Ah, this is a transistor that's gonna be used to boost the signal of our IR LED for the TV Be Gone project. Special pack in just for that project for Adabox 07. Let's see, we are now going to take a look at a couple of other cool things. We have a very short little USB to USB micro cable. And you'll use this to both power and send data to the Gemma M0 for some projects that don't need to use battery. So we have some of these projects I mentioned that involve USB HID. We can make it look to a computer like this is a mouse or a keyboard. And by surreptitiously plugging into the back of a machine, we can get away with some very interesting stuff. So you'll check out the Foul Foul project later, which allows you to execute commands on your target's computer. So there's this nice little USB cable just for that. We also have some conductive fabric. This is a woven, very thin wire fabric which can be used for a couple of interesting projects. We have a Morse code keyer, which I had mentioned before, and we'll end up using some clothes pins and this fabric to make some little makeshift paddle switches so that we can build a proper Morse code keyer. There's also a project that shows how to use this to wrap up a cell phone and essentially build a Faraday cage, which cuts all radio frequency transmissions going into and out of the phone, which is a very important type of security to consider. You never know who's tracking you. And here we have a software-defined radio dongle. Let's open up the package here. And inside this little bag, we'll find a few things. And the two that really matter to us are this antenna, and this little dongle. It also comes with an infrared remote, and we're not gonna use that for this SDR, or Software Defined Radio, but you could use it for detecting IR on your Gemma using the IR receiver that we mentioned before. There's also a CD in here. We're not gonna need that. But we do have some tutorials which will show you how to get started with Software Defined Radio, which allows you to use your computer to decode all kinds of interesting radio transmissions coming across the AM, FM, narrowband, wideband frequencies, including Morse code transmissions, weather radio, and a lot of other interesting stuff. So you'll be able to check all that out using this little RTL SDR dongle and antenna. So these are all the great contents of Adabox 007, the spy box. Let's do a quick recap. We have the Gemma M0, which is gonna be central to so many of the projects from the security themed USB projects 
to an AM transmitter for Morse code, to motion detector alarm, all kinds of things that you'll be able to build with your Gemma M0 that are spy and security related. Then we have the machine screws for attaching components. For the components, we have the infrared transmitter, the infrared receiver, as well as a transistor to boost the signal of the IR transmitter when you want to turn off any TV in range. We have the secret UV marking pen and ultraviolet LED. We have the enamel coated magnet wire and a USB cable for connections. We've got the woven conductive cloth, which can also be a Faraday cage. We now have the vibration sensor, the piezo buzzer, a 10K potentiometer and knob, RTL SDR software defined radio dongle and antenna. We have the AAA batteries and battery box to power your mobile projects. And we have the clear training padlock and lock pick set. Then on top of all of that, if that weren't enough, we have all these great pack-ins. So thank you to DigiKey for the addition of the DigiKeyer puzzle, as well as the webcam cover to protect you from spying eyes. Then we have the bold port sticker set for breadboarding and having a lot of fun with circuitry. We have the Blinka tattoo, Hackspace magazine, the EFF sticker set, and 2600 magazine. Now we'll have a look at some of the many projects that we can build with the contents of Adabox 007. I've prepared some of these projects in advance, but let's take a look at one useful skill, which is bending the leads on our piezo buzzer and using the machine screws in order to connect it to the Gemma M0. So first I'm gonna pull off the little tape and cardboard, and you normally you can cut these right at uh, the point where they enter the tape and the cardboard, but we're gonna use the full length of these to wrap around these little posts that we're gonna make. So here we have our piezo, and I've got a Gemma M0 here, which I've plugged into the battery pack. So I've put two screws through on pin D0 and ground, and these screws are facing up here. What I'm gonna do is now gently and carefully bend the legs coming off of the piezo so that they can fit those screws and then we'll screw them down with nuts to secure them. So I can just use my finger to gently bend that down. You don't want to pry these back and forth because you'll break them off, but just like that will work well. Now if we look at the Gemma, we could fit it pretty well right there and screw them down, or you can loop these around something a little bit so that they connect to the screw better. So you could grab one of the screws uh, itself, we have a nice little pack of them, and bend it around this, or you can use a little set of needle nose pliers, whoops, like so, and like this, and just to hook those around the screws a bit. And now, when I set them on top of those two screws, I can grab a couple of these nuts to fit onto the posts. And these can be a little bit tricky because you gotta have three hands to do it. So you might get someone to help you if you have any problems with it, but not too bad. And you can just finger tighten those or you could use a small socket if you want. And now I'm gonna set this around the other screw, take a nut, and screw that on there like so. And this will both mechanically connect the piezo to your Gemma so it stays put and make the electrical connection that we'll need to drive this little piezo. Okay, once I've got those on there securely, uh, this one has been programmed with our Noyatron, which is set to play a little melody every so often, so you can hide it somewhere and people will wonder where's that sound coming from. So let's test it out. There's a familiar phone ringer. And another one. Rick rolled, good one. Little crickets. So this is set to a demo mode where it's gonna play everything in software. 
and then you can go in and set it to just the one you want and the interval, so something like a half hour or just a couple times a day it could really drive someone mad. So that's one project that you can do with the piezo and the Gemma and the battery pack. Hide that away somewhere. Now let's take a look at uh, another project. This is the phone pouch that I built using our conductive fabric and a sewing machine. So this happens to fit my fairly old school iPhone SE very nicely. And now that it's in there, it has lost all communication to the outside world. So no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone connection. All of that died the moment it went in this pouch and we closed the flap over. Another one of our projects is called the Foul Foul. Now I've taken a Gemma M0 and I've put it inside of a small length of heat shrink tubing and carefully heated this up so that it's a little bit more of a discrete package. And I can connect it to our little six inch USB to USB micro cable and plug it into a target computer. What it's programmed to do right now is to run a terminal program which will download an image, change the user's backdrop, and send a little message to them that they need to mind their security a little bit better. Here we've got a project using the vibration sensor and a piezo buzzer. So you can see here, if it gets disturbed, it's going to let out an alarm. Now these are just some of the projects that you can build using the contents of Adabox 007. Check out the Learn Guide for lots more projects and ideas of where to go from here. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been the Adabox 007 Unboxing.